Welcome back. We're on part 36 of the Amateur Extra License Exam Study. We're on Sub Element 7 Golf. Now I got good news for you. This one's a little bit easier. I think most of the problems in this one, they're, they're going to be a lot easier to explain. So let's start off with some memorization. Question one, what is the typical output impedance of an op amp? The output impedance of an op amp is very low. You only have two choices, very low, very high. Ignore these numbers, very low or very high. It didn't give us an actual part number, so you can't actually have what the input and output impedance is. A typical output impedance is going to be very low and the input impedance is going to be very high. So if we see that one, it's the other one. It's the other one. Oh no, we have a math problem. What is the frequency response of the circuit in E7-3 if a capacitor is added across the feedback resistor? Now RF is the feedback resistor. The answer is a low pass filter. So I kind of drew you the filter over the top of it so you could see it. That's a low pass filter all day long. So that's your answer, low pass filter. If you were to put a high pass filter there, it would look a lot different. So that is your low pass filter. Alrighty, let's continue on to the next one. Hey, I told you we were going to see it. What is the typical input impedance of an op amp? Very high. Ignore the numbers. They didn't give you a part number. So there's no way to know. It's either going to be very low or very high. So the input impedance is very high and the output impedance is very low. What is meant by the term op amp input offset voltage? The differential input voltage needed to bring the open loop output voltage to zero. Unfortunately, that's just something you need to memorize. The differential input voltage needed to bring the open loop output voltage to zero. You can use an input offset voltage with your um, your LM40, LM741, and there is an offset uh, for these, but you know it's it's going to be right there. And let's see, here's your offset null right there. And this is a data sheet for the 741, and there was a reason I was on the page that I was on, and so I'm going to have to get back to it really quick. Okay, I think that's going to be pretty close, so we'll get back to that in a minute. We'll go find it when we need it. How can unwanted ringing and audio instability be prevented in an op-amp audio filter? You need to restrict the gain. If you have a high gain, it could be, become unstable. And the Q, and Q is a, a, a relationship for an op-amp. But just know that it's to restrict both the gain and the Q. What is the gain bandwidth of an operational amplifier? And that is the frequency at which the open loop gain of the amplifier equals 1. And that's why I had this data sheet pulled up to a very specific spot because it it, each data sheet is going to tell you what that gain is in Hertz and we've lost it there it is so the bandwidth at 25 degrees celsius the minimum is going to be 437 kilohertz the typical is going to be 1.5 megahertz for the lm741 all right we found it good deal all right, here we go. I hope you're ready for this one. What voltage gain can be expected from the circuit in figure E73 when R1 is 10 ohms and RF is 470 ohms? This is R1 or your input. This is your feedback. I don't know why they called it R1. When I did this in school, this was the RI and RF, but you know, whatever. This is an inverting technology. Uh, so it's going to invert. Whatever comes in, the inverse is coming out. 
But for gain, ignore it. For gain, ignore it. So you can see right here, I've worked this one out for you. I've worked all of them out. You ignore the inversion sign when you're talking about gain. What voltage gain can be expected? See, our, the, the feedback resistor is 470 ohms. The input, or R1, is 10 ohms. And you just plug it into the gain formula. Gain is re resistor feedback divided by resistor 1 gives you 470 ohms divided by 10 ohms gives you 47. You can ignore the sign here. The sign's only important if it asks you what is the output voltage. It's an inverting op amp topology, so when we get there, you'll see it. For now, it's 47. If you were to do this math wrong, you would come up with some weird number, and that's not the case. It, if you do it right, you're going to have a, a 47, RF over R1. You can memorize the answers to this, or you can just roll with it and, um, well, I'm trying to transition back to my face so we can do the next one. All right, so ignore the sign. This is the sign right here. There is a non-inverting uh, topology for this, but what's interesting is they don't put it on the test at all, which is great. You, one less thing to remember. How does the gain of an ideal operational amplifier vary with frequency? Ideally, you do not want it to vary with frequency. It's not an ideal world. It is not an ideal world at all, but it does not vary with the frequency. Okay, got another math problem for you here. What will the output voltage of the circuit shown in figure E73 if R1 is 1,000 ohms and RF is 10,000 ohms and 0.23 volts DC is applied to the input? It's a two-part problem. The first thing you need to do is figure out the gain. Now, I made both of the resistors in standard form of K, so kilo, one, one kilo ohm, 10 kilo ohms. That makes the math easy because a kilo ohm divided by a kilo ohm is one, so K divided by K is one. You could ignore that. 10 divided by one gives you 10. In this case, it is asking you for the output voltage. Now, you need to not ignore the fact that this inverts. So if you have a positive voltage coming in, you're going to have a negative voltage coming out. Your formula for V out is your gain times voltage in. So your gain is negative 10. Remember, it's inverting times 0 0.23 volts. So that means that your output is going to be negative 2.3 volts. So remember, it's an inverting amplifier. All right, we have another one. This is talking just about gain. So uh, when we're talking about gain, we can ignore the sign. I didn't even write it on there anymore. Ignore that it's inverting. Let's just figure it out. So RF divided by RI. I did the same thing. RF, they gave you a 68 kit. Uh-oh. <laughs> I wrote 38. That should say 68K for RF. I did it right in the math. I don't know what I was thinking. 1.8K ohms. I converted that so that the math would be easier. 68K divided by 1.8K. K divided by K is 1. 68 divided by 1.8 gives you 37.7. It's an inverting op amp topology. We're going to ignore the negative sign and round up. That gives you 38. That's probably, I was probably looking at the answer when I was supposed to be writing 68K right there. And I totally, totally screwed that one up. So it is what it is and it ain't what it ain't. There's no telling how many mistakes I've probably made in this series. If you catch them, put them in the comments. 
Okay, what absolute voltage gain can be expected from the circuit in figure E7-3 when R1 is 3300 ohms or 3.3K and RF is 47K? And this is number 10, I believe. 11? Nope, this is number 11. Same deal. RF over resistor 1 or RF over RI, you get 47K. You can see on this one, I didn't even write it on the, to the resistors anymore because I assume by this point you got it. RF is 47K. R1, I converted to kilo ohms, so that's 3.3 kilo ohms. K divided by K is 1, so you can drop the K. 47 divided by 3.3 gives you negative 14.2. Remember, because it's in an inverting amp, op amp, but the gain is 14. That's your correct answer. Okay, so back to the last question. It's asking you, what is an operational amplifier? It is a high gain, direct coupled differential amplifier with very high input impedance and very low output impedance. So the differential means that it has a positive input and a negative input. They're, they're, they're the difference of each other. High gain, if you were to go back and look at the um, this right here, somewhere on the inside of this can kind of tell you, uh, I, I used to love reading data sheets just for the heck of it. If I was gonna use something, I would know everything that I could understand. But somewhere in here, they'll tell you what the high gain is. And um, there comes a point when that, that gain, if you go too high, your um, frequency response is going to drop substantially. So read you some data sheets, check it out, dig through it, Google what you don't know. But as far as the extra licensing exam goes, it's a high gain direct coupled differential amplifier with very high input impedance and a very low output impedance. Remember, you're only going to see one question from this whole thing on the test. So I wish you the best on that. The uh, Most of these are very related. And so you only have a couple that you really have to deal with. Uh, the ones that do the math, you just have to remember how to do the math, and then you can figure those out without actually memorizing an answer. All right, we'll catch you on the next one, 73.